started this brand new series last week for summer. How many are thankful that it's summertime? I know it's a busy time of the year. Vacations, ball games. Anybody started ball games, t-ball, soccer, uh, just like all the different games, practices, everything that you got to do. But here's what our hope is. We really do hope this, that when you miss church, like you can't be here, we want you to miss church. Like, man, I wish I could have been there Sunday. Not, not necessarily to hear myself or maybe to hear Sean. I know that's, you know, sometimes it's hard to listen to, but <laughs> we love Sean. Me and him, we go back and forth all the time. But it, it's like we want you to miss being here, seeing each other, smiling at each other, being able to talk, being able to connect with people that you've done life with and come together to see someone maybe make a decision to follow God and in this journey. But we know that there's a lot going on this summer at the bridge. We've got groups actually kick off, connect groups next week. It's going to be fun. If you haven't signed up for a connect group, go outside. They got... This QR code thing, I figured it out. It's, it, makes, makes, it makes everything easier. Does that mean that we're lazier when it's easier? Or does that mean you're smarter because you don't work as hard? Hmm, I don't know. Something to think about. But click that QR code. Sign up for a group. There's men's groups. There's a group where we come all together. There's food. I've been studying. I've been telling everybody this. Everything revolved around food with Jesus. I want to be more like him. I just want to be more like Jesus. Then we're going to have our kids camp. It kicks off in uh, July 16th is serve day. Serve days where we go back and pour in our community. We've got a ton of things going on. So check your calendar. Check your things uh, going on in your life. Try to schedule some of these things around it. If you haven't experienced Be Kids Camp, you want to do that. If you have kids, adults even can sign up, I guess, if you want. But you guys got to help. That's all. Um, and, and mark your calendars for this stuff. It's going to be amazing times. But there's certain words that came or come to mind when we talk about summer. Last week, we talked about being refreshed. Anybody feel refreshed? Like when you go down to the creek or you get into the pool or you go to the ocean and you kind of just sit there, you feel refreshed when it's hot or you get a cold glass of ice water after you've got done push mowing and weed eating. There's nothing more refreshing than a cold glass of ice water. But how many of you, when you think about summer, especially as a kid, feel like it's one of the most carefree times of your life? Kids probably don't feel like that, or students, you probably don't feel like that right now because you got the pressures of, you know, taking out the trash and, and washing the dishes and keeping your room clean. Yes, the pressures, right? They're overwhelming, and I can, ex I understand. I do. But I remember, even as a kid, I felt those pressures. I'm going to share some of them. But not having any worries. I didn't have to pay a bill. I didn't have to get up and go to work at 7 o'clock and work till 9 o'clock and then do it all over again the next day and then the next day. I didn't have any of those. I could sleep in with no responsibilities. Can I get an amen? You guys don't sleep in? Unless, that's the only time I didn't get to sleep in. When I went to Minnesota for the summers, my grandpa had a horse farm up there. My dad's dad and mom, they had a horse farm up there. They raised Arabian horses. And I loved going to Minnesota because it was the experience of, it was a different scenery. I didn't have to worry about anything. You know, they, we, we would go to the river. We would do all these different things. But when grandpa was around, he expected us to do the chores before we went and had fun. Loading, unloading hay, feeding and watering the horses. They had to eat every day. I just don't understand why. It's like once a week should be enough, right? Clean the horse stalls. That's fun. If you've never experienced that, let me know. I'll hook you up. Um, all these chores that you had to do, the responsibilities that I had. But here was the offset that would made it fun, made me want to do it every year. I wasn't a glutton for punishment, but grandma always had ice pops in the freezer, like the little popsicle Kool-Aid sticks. And you, you could go in any time and eat as many as you want. Grandma didn't care. Now, grandpa would go around behind us picking up the popsicle wrappers and chewing us out because we'd left them all over the yard. 
But you could go in and eat popsicles. You had your cousins around because all the cousins came up and we hung out, we played, we fished, we, we went to the, uh, to the river. We, we lived right on the river. You could float the river. You could go down play in the water. We went to amusement parks, water parks. We played football. We played softball in a horse arena. Sounds like a lot. I mean, we had a blast as a kid. I didn't have to worry about anything. I didn't know where the food was coming from, who paid the light bill. Didn't really care. It was on. The toilet's flush. The shower was hot. It was perfect. Carefree. No worries. No concerns. But what happened to that? I got married. <laughs> I'm kidding. It happened before I got married. But as I look back, what happened to that carefree life where I didn't have any worries, no responsibilities? And now I look at it and I'm like, why can't I live a carefree life today? Because I have bills. I have kids. I have obligations. I got stresses. How am I going to get enough money to pay all the bills? I got worries. Are my kids going to be okay? Are they going to survive this culture, this time frame? I gotta keep up with everyone's life on social media and make sure I don't miss anything because I have to make sure that they're okay. Trying to fix the world's problems by yelling at the TV when I'm watching the news, like it's gonna change everything. God doesn't want you to worry, He does not want you to stress out. He wants you to live a carefree life. Why do you think he, we were called the children of God? The problem is, is we've taken it all and said, I can handle it. I can do all this. Now, it doesn't mean we don't have responsibilities, but it doesn't mean we have to carry the burden and the weight of everything on this life. God's wanting us to give it to him. So I'm going to give you some keys uh, the keys to life are the keys to, to what it looks like and a scripture to go with it. Um, the first thing that you want to write down is the key to living a carefree life is right thinking, okay? We got to start thinking right. Culture and, and, and technology is, is manipulated and, and warped our thinking sometimes. And I want, you to, I want to take you back to the Bible, what the Bible says. Look what Paul wrote. And he was actually in prison at this time. Chained up to a guard. And as I was studying this this week, it really struck me. I sat and weeped reading this scripture of how many times I've read it over and over and over. And then it was like something just struck me. But he was talking in, in Philippians, in ver chapter 4, verse 4. It says, rejoice in the Lord always. Always. That doesn't mean just when everything's good, there's enough money in the bank account, job's going good, kids are all behaving says, rejoice always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. And this is where it turns into something very, very good. I want you to grab a hold of this scripture. Be anxious for nothing. Don't worry for anything. But in everything, what? By prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, saying, God, thank you for the flat tire. It's great. I'm enjoying the 105 degree weather because the air conditioner's out. Thanksgiving, let your request be known to God. Lord, fix my air conditioner, please. Is that a want or a need? <laughs> let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, our thinking, we gotta think about it, think about what, what our mind is telling us will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Saying, God, I, I'm, I don't know what to think. I don't even know where to turn, but I'm going to you, Jesus. I'm going to your word. I'm going to read this. Don't be anxious. Don't be anxious. Don't be anxious. Quit worrying. Quit worrying. It says in the Bible, it says in the Bible, over and over and over, it tells us in so many different scriptures. Yet, why do we do it? Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if anything is, if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. So he's basically saying, I'm going to retrain your thinking and not think about all the things that you're worrying, you're stressing about that you lay in bed at night and you can't sleep and you're worried about your kids and this and that and you're, ah. 
It's because I'm thinking about the wrong things. Look what the last scripture says. The things which you've learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the peace of God will be with you. Jesus didn't just eat. He didn't just feed everybody. He gave them peace. He spoke into their hearts. He changed their way of thinking. He was saying, live the carefree life that I've given you. You've worked so hard to try to stress yourself out with everything in this world. Just let it go. You're like, I can't. I can't. And I'm not saying you just quit and sit on the couch and twiddle your thumbs and drink iced tea and eat chocolate bars. I mean, there is responsibilities that we have, but don't overwhelm yourself with everything in this world. One thing, one of the big things we um, see in summer are all the graduations. Any graduates here? We got one, two, two. Give them a hand. They did it. Woo! Yeah! Vacation's over and the work starts. <laughs> I'm like, I want to get out of school. I want to get out of school. No, you don't. Stay there. It's that carefree life. <clears throat> We've been counting the days for summer. Parents are counting the days back to school. We know all this stuff already. Then the baseball games start up. You hear the ice cream trucks going down the street. How many likes the ice cream truck when he comes down the road singing his little tune and song? And then you're thinking, man, I wish I was at the beach sitting in a lawn chair with an umbrella over me. And then you become stressed out because you're like, I've never had a vacation in the last four years. And then you just put all that weight on you. There goes your care for your life. We started new, uh, something new this summer, my wife and I and family, um, something that we have seen a lot and maybe just dabbled in from time to time, but we picked up kayaking. Anybody ever go kayaking? Okay, this is chicken. See if you're still awake. So here, uh, Dakota bought my kayak gear. <clears throat> so... We, we, we decided we would go kayaking and, and you know, we're not going to do any vacations this year out of country or state or anything like that. And it was like, you know, we'll just go by the river and get a couple of kayaks and we'll float down the river. And it's, you know, it's enjoying, it's peaceful and, and you're, you know, you're just kind of strolling down there and you're enjoying nature. Look at the fish in the water and, and the bugs that fly around your head and you enjoy them. How many loves buggins? If you don't know what Buggins uh, uh, is, I, I want to introduce you. It's the best thing that they've ever made to keep the gnats out of your face. So the very first time that we went, okay, we were all excited about it. We were waiting for some, like, 90-degree weather, and we were going to go kayaking. You know, we can flip the boat and get into the water, and everything feels good. And uh, it wasn't the case because you live in Missouri. You never know what you're going to get. It may snow next week, but... We were getting in, and, and it was like 50 degrees, okay? And the river was up because it was during that rainy part of the season here just a, a month or so ago. But we were all excited. It's like, get in the water. You know, it's something we haven't experienced before. Let's do it. And the wind was blowing on top of 50 degrees, and the water's like, you know, 47 degrees. And, you know, you're, you're, you're numb from the knees down when you wade out into the water. And that's as far as you want to go. Uh, So you wade out in the water, and uh, we started kayaking, and the current was good. Isabel was having a blast. You don't really get wet. I didn't realize that. I thought you could do the, the kayaking. I thought you'd sit down, and you were sitting in the water, but you, you don't. And so we took off, and it's like, okay, this is cool. The current's taking you down, and, and you're sitting there. And, you know, you got to put your life jacket on. It's just the right size. <laughs> and then you got to roll up your pant legs because you can't be in the water, get your pants wet. Oh, yeah, and you have your hat on because you got to look cool. <clears throat> so we're paddling down the river back, and then, you know, you sit back in the chair, and you relax, and you take in the sun, and the sun's beating down, the breeze is blowing, and you're thinking, okay, this is awesome. God's God's creation. I mean, it doesn't get any better than this, right? <clears throat> All of a sudden, the wind's blowing. And 
we get to the past the current and you're in the dead spot, like where the water's barely moving. And all of a sudden I'm sitting there and I notice, you know, we're supposed to be going that way, and here comes Isabel this way. I'm like, did the river change directions or or what's going on? So we begin to paddle. Well, the wind started blowing like that 30 miles an hour wind. And we're in the water, and the river's supposed to be going this way. I mean, we're like having to dig to just go up downstream. And if you stop, it blows you up, and then it blows you sideways. And I'm like, this is dumb. I thought this was supposed to be relaxing. I didn't know we were going to actually exercise out here. And I'm down there. I mean, we're digging, and Isabel, you know, she doesn't weigh but 30 pounds, and she's on the little bitty top water thing, and she just flies by me, and me and Laura are like digging down on there and, you know, sweating, breathing hard. But it was kind of crazy because I'm like, this is nuts. Why are we going backwards upstream in this kayak? And it made me think about kind of our life sometimes with, we end up paddling and we're like cruising down the, the river of life. And all of a sudden, what happens? We begin to go backwards. And like the, the, cur- the, the wind or something turns us and we're like, I'm, I'm, we're supposed to be going this way. And then all of a sudden, I'm, I'm having to try to paddle to turn my life around. I'm really struggling and then I'm sweating and then I'm, and then I'm out of control. It's like you're paddling against the wind. The current turns us around. Life turns us around. And then what happens to us? Do we just stop? Do we give up and say, well, I guess I'll just go wherever it takes me. I have control. I have the paddle. I, I, I have the thing that's going to get me where I need to go. I just got to get pointed back in the right direction. And there may be a season. There may be a time because between rapids, I had to paddle really hard. But when I got to the rapids, it took me. It took me down. It took me down to the next dead spot, the next area where I had to work a little bit harder to get to the next current, to the next place where it took me on. Paul understood this feeling. He, that's why he was writing this uh, in the scripture to the people in Philippi. He knew the world and the life would try to get in our heads and try to mess us up and say, you don't even need to pick up the paddle anymore. Just let it take you wherever you want to go. Just let life do whatever it's going to do. He knew that it would be pulling us away from God. If God's in that direction and the wind's blowing us this way, sometimes we got to pick up a paddle and start paddling towards God again. It may be tough from times. It may be hard times. We may have to get a workout. We actually may get our, we may actually get a workout and lose some of our love handles. I don't have any. (laughs) Yeah, right. That's why you wear big shirts. But what are some of the things that come against us? That's hot. What are the lies of the enemy telling us, playing in your mind? You're going on cruise control. You're rolling down the rapids, and all of a sudden you hit that dead area. And the enemy comes in and, and says, you were abandoned. Your, your family don't love you. You're, you're on your own. You're out by yourself. Nobody cares about you. Or rejection. You don't feel like you fit in. You don't feel like there's a place where you can be a part. You feel rejected from from family, coworkers, friends, maybe even church. The enemy's gonna tell you those lies. Or I'm a failure. I don't even wanna try anymore. I've tried different things in my life. I've tried to plug into this. I've tried groups. I've tried to befriend people. And I keep failing and I'm a failure. The enemy's telling you that you're a failure. Or I'm not good enough. I don't have the talents. I don't have the skills. I'm not good enough. And here's where it all starts. If there's one thing I want you to grab a hold of is this, and this is something I have put in my mind and my heart over the last 10 years, and I continue to try to do. I fall victim of it sometimes, but it does happen. This is something that you can get out of your mind, and that's negative thoughts. Get rid of the negativity. When you let negativity in, that's where the enemy begins the lies. That is the stepping stone to get into your mind to tell you all the things that you're not enough of. Wave after wave. Have you ever laid in bed at night telling yourself that? I'm a failure. I'm a, I'm, I've been rejected. I'm not good enough. 
wave after wave. Middle of the night, can't sleep. Enemy wakes you up. You're not good enough. Quit trying. Don't pick up that paddle. Just let me take you where I want you to go. Negativity is like a consuming disease. And I want to encourage you, do not let it infect you. Do not get around you. How many likes? Don't raise your hand because that person may be sitting beside you. I don't know. Who likes negativity? Do you like to be around negative people? I No. If, if I, well, I'm not going to say that. I may, I may cut my own throat there. I just don't like to be around it because I, I love to be positive. Yeah. Oh, well, I had a flat tire. Guess what? I can get a new one. Oh, well, the engine went out. Okay, yeah, stinks right now. I'm in the dead area of my life. I'm going to keep paddling through it. I'm going to get it fixed. I'm going to find a way. I'm going to make it work. I don't have money to pay my bills. So what? We'll figure it out. We'll cut some costs somewhere. I'm not going to say, well, I guess we'll just quit. You know, life's just too hard. No, I'm going to turn to God. I'm going to say, God, I know that you got a plan. I know you got a design. I know you're going to see me through, and you're going to walk with me every step of the way. You're in the boat with me. All these lies from the enemy start with a negative thought. Think about it. Negative thoughts. It's like, a, it's like a roller coaster, the snowball effect. But Paul says, set your mind on these things to keep headed in the right direction, to keep from drifting the wrong way. And it's, not, it, it's really not that hard. It's simple. Not something deep or difficult to understand, but something we can remember and won't weigh us down. I'm going to give you some of these keys, some of these things. I'm going to give you five things real quick. And then we're going to go eat barbecue and lay on the creek or the beach or wherever you're going from here and have a good time. But I'm going to give you just a few things to think about this summer, the keys to living a carefree life. Paul said in this passage, I'm going to break this passage down and talk about the, the five different things. The first one is, what is true? What is true? If you want to write it down, truthful things are found in the Word of God. I love the Bible. I love Google with the Bible because then I don't have to necessarily search all the way through it. I can just Google it, and then I can find the Scriptures and then reference them and put them together. Okay? It makes studying so much easier nowadays. But one thing I need is clean water in my body. We need to, we need to drink water. So I brought two bottles of water here. That's what these are for. And uh, I was going to get one of those, like, Fiji bottles. I couldn't find it, and I couldn't afford it. But, <laughs> like, the Fiji bottle of water, you know, it's, it's supposed to be, and it says it's purified and filtered natural spring water out of the mountain, Everest, clear, wherever. Just, you know, put it on stuff. But how many of you, when you get done here today, are going to go over to the mud hole and dip you out a cool glass of water and put some ice in it? Probably not. Probably not. And I thank God every day for good opinions, great thoughts. And I can promise you, uh, someone can sell you a so-called good opinion and make it sound fail-proof. They can tell you, and, and you can follow along and be like, yeah, we need to do that. That sounds like a really good idea. But did you know that even bottled water, I mean, you look at these two bottles, they're almost identical, right? I mean, you can see through them. Looks pretty clean. Looks pretty clean. I mean, there's no labels on there. I just want you to be able to see. But this bottle of water I got out of the toilet. This bottle of water has been unopened. But can you tell the difference? I can because I marked it because I want to make sure I didn't want to drink it. So if you see this bottle of water laying around, don't drink it. It didn't really come out of the toilet. I'm just kidding. I wouldn't do that because I would be afraid somebody would drink it. But it may look clean. It may look the same. But my question is, do you really know where it came from? Just because you see it, just because it looks good, doesn't mean that you really know where that water came from. You're taking what? Somebody's word. Somebody's approval. Somebody's label that says that it's good enough. They make those emergency kits. kits. Laura and I were talking about it. You like pour into your water and it's like supposed to clean it. You can, I guess, put it in toilet water and it may clean it. I still probably wouldn't drink it, but 
They say it's supposed to clean the water in any way. But this water came from an artesian well. This one came out of the bathroom. They look the same, completely the same. And you could possibly drink this, although we know it's not from there because I told you that, but it, it, you could drink it. And, and, and it would probably be, I guess, okay if you were dying and it was your last resort. But guess what? You're going to have a whole lot higher risk of getting disease, getting sick, or possibly even dying from it if it came from, you know, an unpurified source. So my thought is with this, to the truth of God. Spiritually, don't just take someone's word, what the Bible says, whether it's myself or any other preacher or your parents or anybody else. Not that they're trying to mislead you. Not that, not that the water necessarily would kill you or be bad for you. But has it been purified? Is it coming? Do you know where the actual source comes from? This is why I teach people and I want people to understand is go directly to the word of God. There's nothing that, it can't be disease, it can't be contaminated, it can't have an opinion, it doesn't have a label on it. It's coming directly from the Word of God. And when you get it directly from the Word of God, guess what? It's going to be purified. It's not going to have anything else, an opinion, a direction, or anything like that. Of course, as a preacher, as a pastor, I'm trying to give you the best I know how. But even with mine, expertise or knowledge or experience, I am not purified enough from the word of God. It's the word of God. Jesus' written word is what's going to guide us, direct us. It's going to purify our soul, our spirits. And they may get a different interpretation than you. You, you may, may look at this bottle and, and, you know, look at it completely different than I would. It may have different content in it than I would have thought. Doesn't mean that it's necessarily bad or wrong, but it's, you know where the source is. You know where you're getting it from. You know it's 100% true because it comes from the Bible. Truth is only found in the clear, purified word of God. It's been tested and it's good for you. It's intended to help wash out all the toxins in your body to help clean you. When I get water straight out of the well, right out of the source, when it comes from the artesian well, when it comes right out of the word of God, guess what? It's not full of opinions, man-made stuff, ideology, anything like that. It's directly from the source and the word of God. It's going to hide you for the, hydrate you for the day spiritually. It's going to hydrate you for the week. It's going to give you what you need to make, make it through all of life's problems to get you to eternity. The word of God. That's what's true. It's true. It's true. The second thing is, is that we think um, on things that are noble. How do I know if it's noble? Write it down. Noble things inspire worship and awe of God. Reverence like, wow. Wow. Noble. Sometimes I need some fresh worship in my life. Sometimes I need to step away. I need some fresh air. Anybody ever need some fresh air? You like got to step out and like, okay, I need to, woo, I just need to get away. I was kind of feeling that this week leading up to this weekend. I was like, I'm just like overwhelmed, freaked out, everything in my mind. I'm like, I just need to get out and breathe, refocus, reset, say, okay, God, this is me and you. This is my time. This is where I can sit down and look at that tree and say, wow, God created that. God created that. Just stop, slow down. Noble things. Think on eternal things. To spend my time and energy on things that impact eternity. I'm, re, I'm revisiting my thinking. I want to go back to carefree, carefree thinking. We need to stop and get away. Find that quiet place. Get lost in worship to our maker. Do you ever do that in your car? Maybe turn on worship music and just honor God, worship God. Or, or maybe you're on a boat or you're in the woods or, or wherever. Or maybe you're reading a book. I don't know. Finding a place to stop and say, God, I thank you so much for this, this life, this opportunity to know you, where we live, for you saving my soul. Just worship him. The third thing is, I got to go through these a little bit quicker here. Think on things that are just. 
Just things remind us to do the right thing. First time out this year on the kayak. Again, we talked about cruising. Water was like 50 degrees. I mean, seriously, it was like cold. Sun was out, though. It was still chilly. I had my, my swim trunks on and my pearly white showing. <laughs> my legs that are. But I was like, you know, I don't need any sunscreen. It's like 50 degrees outside. You don't need any sunscreen. I mean, sun's only when it's like 105. That's, that's when the sun cooks you. My wife's like, you better put some sunscreen on. I'm like, ah, I'm a man, I don't need no sunscreen. I can take it. Yeah, I didn't listen to her. Just cruising down. You put your legs in the water for a minute and then put them up there and they're cold and that sun beating down. Feels good. I wasn't worried about the negative to the exposure of the sun at the time or the consequences of tomorrow and the next day and the next day. But if I'd have put the sunscreen on, my legs wouldn't have burnt and blistered up and my wife's going, see, I told you so. Told you. So like now my leg is, this side's tan and this side's still white because when you sit in a kayak, you only get one side. You can't flip over and baste. Like you don't roll. <laughs> Spiritually, sunscreen, we need to put it on. The, the exposure to this world. When you turn on the news and you got God's sunscreen on, you got to filter the way that you see it. You don't see it the same way. You don't look at social media the same way. You don't look at your neighbor, your coworker, your family, because you're putting on a screen something that is protecting you. And I'm not allowing those things, that negativity in my life, I'm going to block it. I'm going to keep it away. Because then I don't allow it in. It doesn't affect me for tomorrow, the next day, the next day. We may even have to put some sunglasses on in the middle of summer. And I, uh, I, I wear sunglasses like all the time, so this is very normal to me. But like you get the polarized ones. Have you ever seen, I mean, have you ever, you've heard of polarized sunglasses. So when you put them on, you can see into the water. So cool. Like when you're floating, you can look down and see the fish swimming through the water. You can see their eyes. I can tell like a smallmouth bass has red eyes. And you can identify it by looking through there. But if you take your glasses off, you got the glare. You can't see it. All you can see is your what? Reflection. You can only see yourself. But if I put on something like sunglasses with lenses so that I can see through Spiritually, when I put them on, I'm blocking off different things, but I'm not seeing it to the way that I normally would because if I have my glasses off, all I see is me. I'm worried about me, 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 me. Protect me, keep me back. Keep a, if I put on my glasses with polarized lenses, my spiritual glasses, all I can do is I can see through everything and it's gonna help me take time to look at other people's lives and to actually help them because I'm seeing past what myself I'm looking past myself. I'm seeing through. And I see people and where they're hurting and where they need help and the situations that they're going through and life's overwhelming them. And I don't have to say, well, I can just see surfacely because everything looks good. All I see is myself and I see what, you know, you standing beside me, behind me. But now I can see, I can see through. I can see someone's life and I can help them. I want to do the right things. Just things cause me to do the right thing and help me treat people right. I think we live in a world that needs to work at helping treat people right. The things that we're going through, the things that we're dealing with. Fourth thing is, is think on things that are pure. Pure things reflect God. Jesus was pure. He was sinless. Jesus walked this earth. He, had, he, was blem he didn't have a blemish on him. He was white as snow. He, he was the ultimate, perfect human being soul that walked on here. God robed in flesh. Holy, God-like, uncontaminated. What are, you, what are you putting in your mind? What are you putting into your heart? Pure things? Do you put things that are, you know, somewhat pure? Some, eh, you know, they're borderline. I can walk the edge. I can do this. I can do that. What are you taking in? Do you pay attention how much time that you're on Netflix, how much time you listen to certain kinds of music, how much time do you spend, you know, in poor conversation, bad jokes, 
I've had to remove myself. I will sit for a certain time and then I will just remove myself by not by making a scene, but I will remove myself because I know it's not healthy for me. It's not pure. Well, how myself what I watch, what I read? Do you have a summer reading plan? Do you have something that you are putting in, whether it's the Bible or it's a book or it's something that's going to be wholesome to give you insight, to give you encouragement, to help you rid off? That's what putting sunblock on spiritually is reading, is putting something in that's going to protect you. It's going to protect you. Number five, think on things that are lovely. Lovely things create contentment and bless others. I need positive in my life. I need positive people in my life encouraging me, helping me to be content. How do you know that it's hard? How, how many knows it's hard to, to be content today? It's just, it, it's, it's like, we're, it's always more. It's this and that. I need help in my life. I need help with my marriage. My kids. I need help with my kids. And there's nothing like a life-giving relationship to do life together with someone else that has either been through that situation or is going through that situation that's going to help you make it along. That's what our connect groups are for. And again, that's why we had that, we told you at the beginning to sign up for that connect group because that's where you get to meet people. I, I don't want to do life on my own, I, I, alone. I, I don't, I don't want to make it by myself. I can do it. I can grind through. I can, I can make it, you know, by what, reading the Word. But I can do it so much better if I have somebody helping me just like you. Find those positive relationships, somebody that's going to speak positively into your life. Number five, last one, good reports. Share the good for all to hear. God is listening when you text him, when you direct message him, when you call him. He's there. He's not ever going to be going straight to voicemail. He's going to pick up. He's going to hear you. He's listening. We all have a testimony. Every one of us has a testimony. Every one of us has a story. And here's what God wants you to do. He wants you to share it. And you're going like, well, I don't know scriptures. I'm not theological. I'm not, you know, I never went to school for that. I'm not an open. Just share what God's done for you in your life, where he's brought you from. It's amazing the impact that it has. Tell someone that God's changed your life. What inspires you to share your story? What inspires you to roll down the window, sing, to share the good report? Revelations 12 and 11 says, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love, they did not love their lives to the death. Summer 2022, this summer. Let's remove negativity. Just remove it from your life. When you hear something negative, well, it's, it's this or it's that or it's too hot, it's too cold. I don't know about this guy and this woman, this lady, the way they're doing things. Yeah, just let it go. Don't, don't buy into it. Don't, don't dangle in the bait. I had somebody on Messenger this weekend or right before we left, like dangling this bait in front of me trying to see if I'd take it. You know, like, I mean, on Facebook Messenger from church and, like, cussing me out and stuff. And I'm like, I'd like to respond. I'd like to, can I have your address? I'll come visit. <laughs> and Laura and I talked about it, and I'm like, why? For what? What am I going to do? I'm not going to allow the negativity into my life. I'm just not going to do it. So you hit delete, gone, bye. I have control. Okay? You have control of what you put in, what you let in. And yeah, I know nobody's perfect and we're all going to have bad days. And remember, when somebody's negative or something's happening, say, man, maybe they're having a bad day. What can I do to encourage them not feed their fire? I'm going to be a person of good report. I'm going to share God. I'm going to share what he's done for me. I love everybody, even when you're a knucklehead, even when I'm a knucklehead. I hope you love me. When I make a mistake, love me. I'll love you right back. When we do that, when we're routine, think on these scriptures, what it says in Philippians chapter four. If you've got to read it over, read it over tomorrow if it helps you. When we do those things, the scripture says that the God of peace is with you. That's what I truly want. I want God with me in every moment. 
And I can tell you, when I have God with me every moment and I'm his child, I'm the child of God, that means that I can live a carefree life. And that's what I hope today that you have. So I want you, as they turn the lights down, if you bow your heads, close your eyes with me this morning, get you out of here. But before we do, I just want God to speak to our hearts. And maybe somebody's here today that doesn't know him, and I want to give you that opportunity this morning. Ask God right now, every one of us, Lord, are there areas in my life where I need to adjust my thinking, to adjust negativity in my life, my thoughts, my, are they pure, are they noble? What Philippians tells us. And speak to me today, God, in those areas, mine included, God, right now. Lord, we love you. We thank you so much for the opportunity that we have to come in here this morning, to hear your words, to encourage one another, to leave things in the past and move forward, not dwelling on them, not living in negativity. But thank you for allowing us to have instruction to stay going in the right direction. Lord, sometimes we may need to pick up the paddle and, and work through some things to get to that next cruise area. Lord, but help us to just quit drifting aimlessly as the wind blows us and pushes us around. Let us think on the right things. Let us have peace in our hearts and in our minds, knowing that all we need today is you. In Jesus' name, amen. I believe that there's someone here today who needs a new beginning, a fresh start. You know in your heart, deep down, and I've experienced this time and time again, and maybe it's for the first time or maybe it's just something new, but you know you need a change. And you feel like the currents are either pulling you down, maybe you flipped out of the boat. You feel like you're maybe even drowning or maybe the wind's just pushing you around and you feel like you're kind of aimlessly going down the river in any direction. I want, to, I want you to understand one thing this morning is that, that you're not alone. We're here with you. But most of all, God is sitting here right beside you. He's got his arm around you right now saying, I'm right here. I'm right here. Just pick up the paddle. Maybe you're here to say, Rocky, I need Jesus. And, and if, if you're ready to make a decision today, I, I, to, to know him for the first time, if, you don't, if you've never had an experience with God, if you've never given your heart to Jesus today, I want to create that opportunity for you this morning. And what I'm going to ask is, I just want you to raise your hand when I count to three. And it, it's nothing overwhelming. We're not going to have you come up here. We're not going to come back to you for any reason. But right now, with just a boldness between you and, and God, if that's you today, and you say, I need Jesus. I am ready for salvation. I'm ready to give him my heart. On the count of three, would you be bold enough just to raise your hand? One, two, three. Just give him your heart. Thank you. God sees your hand. I can't see you, but he sees you. He knows where you're at. If you raised your hand this morning, I want you to say this prayer. You can say it in the words that I'm gonna pray, or if you know how to pray, pray it in your own words. If you're here today and you need to give your heart back to God and you need to rechange your life, you need a course correction, you need to pick up the paddle and say, God, I need to work a little bit harder. I want you to say this prayer. This is where it can start. This is where it can begin. Say, dear Jesus, <laughs> I invite you into my heart, into my life for the first time or again. Please forgive me of my sins, my shortcomings, my weaknesses, my mind. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins to pay the penalty of sin. And you rose again on the third day. Today I confess that you are my Lord and my Savior, as it tells me to do in Romans. I give you my life. I ask that you give me a new beginning and a fresh start right now, today, in Jesus' name, amen. Would you stand with me one more time and give God some praise? Those that have given their hearts to God, sing it to him one more time. Thanks for listening to today's message. 
We pray that it strengthened, encouraged, and empowered you. We would love to connect with you. So if you have questions, need prayer, or simply want to let us know how this message has helped you, please send an email to info at thebridgechurchmo.org. To stay up to date with all the events at The Bridge, follow us on Facebook and Instagram. 